Grace and peace unto you, children of God, from our Father and the Lord Jesus the Christ. You know, I always thank God on your behalf for His grace, that in all things you're enriched by Him, so you won't be lacking in any gift. I'm your professor, Dr. Stephanie. Welcome to the Master's Touch Master Class. Now, these classes are designed to give you a firm foundation in the Word of God. And if you can't make it at the time of our broadcast, then know that these messages are archived for your study convenience here on Spreaker.com and on our website, themasterstouch.org. Now, God bless you richly as we begin to enter God's presence. So let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we come into your presence with praise and thanksgiving in our hearts flowing through our lips, and we exalt and praise you and your holy name. Lord, we thank you for the hearts and the minds that are hungering for you and your will and your word. We praise you for your, <clears throat> for our Lord, excuse me, our Lord and Savior, your only Son, Jesus the Christ, and his finished work on the cross on our behalf. Thank you, Lord, for revelation knowledge, for impartation, for your rhema word, the logos word, and the gift of utterance. Bless those that have ears to hear, Lord, as you impart wisdom through your word. In the name above all names, the matchless name of Jesus the Christ, amen. All right, my friends, did you come expecting to receive today? Well, if not, you won't receive anything from God. Remember, elevate your expectation level, and you'll come away with a greater revelation and a greater heart and mind connection. It's imperative that you come expecting to receive. Now, before we begin, we must come into the presence of God fully in order to gain complete understanding of these messages. So let's do that right now. Soak with me.
We're still delving into discipleship, and this is a very misunderstood subject. My plan, as you know, is to give you clarification of it once for all time. So forget all you think you know about discipleship as we begin again today, and this time we're going to be talking about listening to God. Listening to God means being fruitful. Listening multiplies the seed given to you. It's faithfulness that makes fruitfulness. And we're, we're to make disciples through his word, and we're to point to Christ, never to ourselves. We make disciples for Christ, not for other people like ourselves. So the word to the non-Christian is the gospel. For those who are in Christ, it's the word of God. It's the Bible, prayer, discipleship, and our growth in him. This is what we listen to, not to mere uh, faulty trends and ideas of people or what po what's popular or what we want or feel that we want, want and need. We are to listen and grasp Christ and his word. Now, in Jesus' time, disciples were to become teachers and teach others <coughs> so that the message was multiplied many-fold, just as Christianity had its start with one, then twelve, then 120, then several thousand, to perhaps a billion over the last 2,000 years. What keeps us and this cycle going besides the Holy Spirit's empowerment, of course, is our ability to hear and receive the information and comprehend what's been imparted to us. Then make a commitment to that information so it transforms, renews, and guides us in our connection to God, self, and others. The other key component to this is our faith. Our impacted and connected faith is what leads uh, uh, to our obedience. <clears throat> so these are the keys to providing nutrients to the soil of your life so that God's seed produces a hundredfold in you and then becomes the example and future for a hundredfold impact on others. What stops this process? Well, listening, not listening, actually. Not listening leads to competing with God as we replace him with other things that he calls our deceitfulness. We take tolls like crossing a toll bridge from God, money that is purely needed and meant as a gift, an instrument from God. And it's for us to use wisely, but by our pride and selfishness becomes our obsession and or our trust. If our mindset's like that, if we begin to rely on self and our abilities to make money and use it for all it does, then money will quickly lead us astray to be choked and scorched. Our evidence is found in Matthew 6, verses 25 through 30. What is our call in the, in the Matthew 13 passage? Listen to God. One hears the word of the Lord and understands, refers to trust and obedience. In other words, one hears the word of the Lord and is trusting and obedient. We can only serve God by being people of God. We can only bear fruit by the indwelling of His Spirit, having our faith and obedience working together. Ultimately, there are only two types of soil, good and bad. In one, the seed dies, and in the other, it multiplies. Amen? I mean, go put a seed in your garden. See what happens. <laughs> uh, that pasture soil in Matthew 15 was obviously shallow, rocky, and barren of any nutrients. Which kind of dirt are you uh, planted in? I mean, what are you planted in? God wants everyone to receive the light of his word, Luke 8, 16 through 18, and Romans 8, 35. But he knows free will chooses to not listen and therefore pushes it aside. He has to interject his spirit into us before we will receive it. And yet, even then, it's never forced. We still have to receive it by faith, a choice we make, an election he gives that is predestined. If we don't obey what he gives us, you know, to obey, we can't receive more. So, the small things matter to God much more than the big things matter to us. The kingdom of heaven includes all Christians, and it's not just the perfect, true church, rather than uh, it's all of the elect from humanity where God weaves his love and plan of redemption through all of us. It's the real, authentic Christian and the reprobate, the good plants ripe for harvest and the weeds. It's the good and the evil. It's Christ taking our sin and reworking us, as Romans chapter 8 proclaims, for the perfection of eternity. We are not perfect now, but we can attain perfection while we're still here on this earth. Bible perfection means spiritual maturity. We can achieve that while still here on this earth. Only those who are in Christ will be the perfect with the perfect because one can't attain spiritual maturity without Christ. So God's word has life and power, and make sure you have received that. Keep receiving it and listening so God can use you to reap a hundredfold harvest. Let's take a look into active listening with God. In these last days he has spoken to us by his Son, whom he appointed heir of all things, and through whom he made the universe. Hebrews 1 verse 2. 
Okay, did you know that the phrase, uh, the phrase is, I should say, listen or hear, the, hear the word of God, occurred dozens of times in Scripture? The phrase, hear the word of the Lord, occurs 24 times. So we can surmise then that this is important. Yet so few do it. Even those in Christian leadership don't listen to the word or hear the word of God. We have to acquiesce and listen to God. The key to be active with our listening uh, is something that we need, and we need instruction for that key. We some uh, When something of, from God's word comes to us by reading or hearing or, or from a sermon or a Bible study, or even from a friend or an unexpected source, then ask yourself, how does this apply to me? How does this work in my situation or to my future or help me cope with my past? Then be attentive and purposeful in your approach to God. Listen, my friends, be a learner, not a whiner. I'll say it again. Be a learner, not a whiner. Resolve to be determined, not apathetic. Go to the source. Don't just wait around and do nothing with your faith. This is about our walk with God. As we walk, we lean on Him to learn from Him. We lean and we listen. And we listen when we pay attention and focus by laying aside our worries, hurts, and frustrations and cling to Him with trust and obedience. We mustn't always go to God with our own laundry list. We must take the cares and the problems of others to Him in our prayers and He will bless us and take care of our needs. In Hebrews 1, 1 through 4, God shows us that He's at work and wants to speak to us. He is fully God, one with the Father, and He is greater than all. Jesus Christ is excelsior par excellence, Lord. The surpassing greatness of all that is or ever will be. And he is speaking to us. Hey, he's speaking to you. That's right, he is. Are you listening? Who is Jesus to you? How do you know him? Do you know him as Savior? Do you know him as healer? How do you know him? How does this hold up to who he is in reality as revealed in the scriptures? Is Jesus the central figure in your life, as he is the central figure in the entire universe? If so, then you are listening, right? If you're gleaning from his word and not reading in what you want to see and hear. Now, Jesus is the ultimate. He is son, God's son. He is the heir of all things, and he is supreme. You know, it's imperative that we know who Jesus is. In our last days, especially, the time of our actual living here and in our ministering, as he is the one, the promise, and our Savior. He's important. Jesus created the world and holds all things together, whose imprint is in all things and radiates God's glory, presence, and awe, as he also speaks to us by his call and his precepts. He sits at God's right hand and controls the universe, giving us glimpses of his being and his word. He is also the one spoken of by the prophets who came to save and take away our sins. Jesus is supreme and superior to any created thing, including angels. And guess what? He's speaking to you. What happens when we don't listen to God? Do you know people who are grumpy, stale, fruitless, self-driven, so that all that comes from them is anger, negativity, and bitterness? Well, if they claim Christ as Lord, there is perhaps a disconnect between their faith, life, and hearing, and the applying of God's voice, like in the life of so many that claim they don't hear from God. Because when God speaks to us, we have a responsibility to hear His Word and His voice, well, actually, hear His voice through His Word, and apply what He says. If you're listening to Him, and you're hearing it in the Word, and you hear, you get some instruction from the Word, and you don't apply those things that you hear from God and from His Word to your life, Shame on you. You're not being obedient. You know, God's Son, Jesus the Christ, is our Lord and our example. His supremacy should remain in us as it does throughout time and the immense eternity of space. No matter who you are or what you go through, Jesus Christ is Lord and is speaking to you. Look at some of the attributes of Christ in Hebrews chapter 1. He is supreme to all, created all things, is incarnate. He made you, and he is the radiance of God's glory who sustains all things. Now look what he has done for you. He has given you redemption and purification from sin, all sin, past, present, and future. What have you done with these things? Now Jesus must echo throughout our nature and being throughout our lifestyle, so we are full of him and not full of ourselves or the ways of the world. And this will greatly impact our lives. 
our church, and our temperament. You know, the more we lean, <clears throat> the more we lean on. <clears throat> excuse me. <clears throat> the more we lean on and learn of and from Christ, the more we can listen to Him, and the more we can grow in Him. But it takes the surrender of our being to His ultimate being, and we have to give up, folks. We have to surrender. We have to die to self. And we have to hear him so his presence is practiced and applied to our daily journey in this life. Our, our lifestyle should be ref, of a reflection of what Jesus is, of all of his attributes. Why? Why do I say that? Because when you're born again, you are born through Jesus Christ. You are you're spiritually reborn through him. Now you're bone of his bone, flesh of his flesh, and with Holy Communion we have his blood. Hallelujah, we're complete. So, if you're not... Uh, surrendered to Christ, you're not died to self and, and now living for the Christ in you, then you are in really bad trouble <laughs> because you're being disobedient and you're not listening to him, you know, because otherwise you'd practice his presence and you'd apply what you are learning from the word of God to your daily journey in life. This is what grows our faith takes us victoriously through the stress and torments of this life and encourages and inspires others around us. The problem comes when we tend only to have ears for our circumstances, experiences, desires, and plans, intentionally or unintentionally, muting his voice and seeking to compromise our Lord's sovereignty over our personal lives. Now remember, what he has for us is far greater and effectual than what we may have or have seen. Ezekiel 128, Ezekiel 2, 1, Galatians 2, 20 through 21, Philippians 3, 1 through 14. Those are your evidence. Look them up. Well, let me see. What happens when we do listen to God? <laughs> In John 8, verses 12 through 30, it says, Jesus gives one of his most incredible and important proclamations. I don't want to say incredible. One of the most credible, I should say, because incredible means that you don't believe it. Unbelievable. Jesus gives one of his most credible and important proclamations and revelations about himself. God, that he is the light of the world. He declares that if you listen and follow me, Jesus Christ, you will not stumble in life or in religion. You will have eternal life and purpose here and now, too. You'll not be a stumbling, uh, be stumbling through the dark and the darkness and chaos of life because you'll have his illumination upon your path and personally know the light that leads to true and eternal life. Wow. That's great. And this greatly disturbed the, disturbed the Pharisees, let me tell you. They claimed you can't say that. You can't claim yourself as a witness to yourself. Now this may be true to the scriptures, but they didn't understand the true triune nature of God, did they? Yes, he can say that. Jesus responded this way. He said, these claims are true. The Father is the other prime witness. Yes, I make claims about myself because I know who I am and where I come from. You do not. For understanding, your understanding is limited by your pride and inadequate thinking. I'm not judging, but if I did, it would be truthful. I stand here, but not alone. I have the Father who sent me. Thus, as the law states, when two or more witnesses make a statement, it is fact. What I am saying is fact. I am one witness and my father is the other. Now the Pharisees wanted to know where his father was, but they didn't know God, whom they claimed to follow, or what they were doing. They refused to listen because of pride and pretentiousness. You know, when we remain obedient and listen to God, we will refuse to be distracted from what is false and misleading. What seems to look good but will snare us. This will lead to our trustfulness and faithfulness and will then take seriously our call to be disciples and make disciples. And he'll show us. Just think of his blessings and joy of being in him. Um, most of the things that hold us back from growing in Christ aren't just sins. But rather, it's when we refuse to recognize his divine power that we shut down. We are ignorant of what he can do and are afraid when we know we should follow him. James 1, 2 through 8. Are you not listening? Dealing with anger? Uh, these are sure ways to keep people in care away from you and to run your church into the ground. <laughs> okay? What else can you do to make friends or build a church? Listen. What can you do to control your anger? Listen. 
What can you do to help you grow spiritually? Listen. What can you do to help your church grow? Listen. The lack of listening and the abundance of anger, especially when it's out of control, will create a very negative atmosphere for the Christian and the church. Proverbs 27, verse 9. Make sure if you consider yourself a child of God that you listen to him. Make sure if you are in Christian leadership that you are under the command and control of Christ and that there is no disconcert uh, to what he has for you or that you're not blocked by your own arrogance or busyness. Did you receive this today? I pray you did. If you have questions or need further assistance with understanding these messages, please contact me. Remember that when I um, when I give you the first in a series, the first lesson in a series, it's usually an overview of what's co what's coming forth after that. Um, we just kind of dibble dabble over the top of it, and then we break it down from there on on uh, forward. We break it down to a gnat's wing so that you get complete understanding of it. So remember this. Discipleship is important. Who disciples you is important. How you're discipled is important. And the end result of what you believe because of your discipleship is vitally important. So <clears throat> that's a good thing to keep in mind. Okay? Now I'm going to give you my contact information uh, for our uh, your use. All right? <laughs> you can contact me. Uh, on the website, themasterstouch.org, that's our website, www.themasterstouch.org. Email me there on my webmail, drstephanie at themasterstouch.org. That's D-R-S-T-E-F like Frank, E-N-I, at themasterstouch.org. Dr. Stephanie is spelled again D-R-S-T-E-F-E-N-I, and the F is like Frank. Also, masterstouchhs at cox.net, that's my regular email, masterstouchhs at cox.net, or poet at cox.net, P-O-E-T at cox.net, or M-T-H-S prayer at cox.net. That's the letter M, the letter T, the letter H, the letter S, and the word prayer at cox.net. I want to invite you to uh, join us at 10 o'clock this morning in about half an hour. At 10 a.m. Pacific Time, I want to invite you to join Pastor Karen Weitzman and myself right here on Spreaker.com for Living the Word. And this we do every Monday at, at Spree, on Spreaker.com at 10 a.m. Pacific Time. Living the Word is a program that teaches you how to apply the Word and promises of God to your life today. So come join us on Mondays at 10 a.m. Pacific Time right here, right following this program at Spreaker.com and come expecting to receive. My friends, remember Proverbs 4, verse 7 tells us that wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom, and in all of your getting, get understanding. And that's exactly what we're doing here. We're gaining God's wisdom, so be sure you're keeping Jesus Lord of your life. Master's Touch Masterclass is a subsidiary of the Master's Touch Healing School of Ministry International. We're a 501c3 organization. I will see you again here in the Master's Class on Thursday at uh, 10 a.m. Thursday at 10 a.m. Pacific Time, right here on Spreaker.com for the Master's Touch Masterclass. God bless you.